locate your breath. Try to breathe deeply to begin with as a way of emphasizing where the breath energy is in the body. And if deep breathing feels good, you can keep it up. If not, you can change. One of the lessons we learn as we do breath meditation is that you have a choice in the present moment. There are lots of potentials in the present moment, and breath is one of them. You can make it longer, you can make it shorter, faster, slower, deeper, more shallow. The Buddha never said just to watch the breath as it is. He always says to train yourself to breathe in different ways. Breathe in a way that's calming to the body. Breathe in a way that's energizing, depending on what you need. Breathe in a way where you're aware of the whole body as you breathe in, the whole body as you breathe out. This is a training, but the whole purpose of the training is to see that, yes, you do have choices in the present moment. You're not just the victim of past habits. If you couldn't change your past habits, the Buddha said there would have been no point in teaching. The fact that he did teach was because we can change. So look what you can change right now. You can change your breath, make it nicer, make it more soothing to the body if that's what the body needs, more energizing if that's what it needs. And you can turn around and look at your mind. You can perceive the breath in different ways. What kind of perception is useful right now? It's in this way that the breath becomes a skill. And as you develop the skill, you learn a lot about not only the breath, but more importantly about the mind. Because the mind is what's in charge right now. In fact, it's always in charge. The problem is the wrong parts of the mind tend to be in charge. Your greed, aversion, and delusion tend to be in charge. Your mindfulness gets forgotten. Your alertness is off someplace else. And the mind can be very lazy, just want to do whatever it's done out of force of habit. But then you don't learn anything that way, and there's certainly nothing improved that way. And simply accepting the fact that you have the habit, that's one very small step in the right direction. But then once you've got the habit, you don't just stay there. You've accepted it, okay, what's it doing? Is it good for you? If it's not, you can change. That's the promise that's provided by every present moment. If you find that you're engaged in a habit that's unskillful, you can stop it. Now, maybe you can't stop it once and for all, but for the time being, for this moment, you say no, and then this moment, you say no, and then this moment. And you begin to see the mind's reactions. And that's how you come to understand the mind, by resisting its impulses. And then it shows its true nature, it shows its true colors. And then you can see more clearly the problems you've got to deal with inside and use the Buddha's teachings and whatever other dharma you've learned from your practice to undercut whatever unskillful voices there are in the mind. So you learn about the mind by training it and seeing where it resists the training. And you don't just give in and say, well, that's an awful lot of effort that goes into the training. And we're supposed to be finding peace and quiet, so I'll just be peaceful and quiet. A lot of the, there's a lot of work that has to go into becoming peaceful and quiet. And simply giving in to your old defilements is not the way to do it. You have to, you have to resist them. Use whatever energy, whatever wisdom you have, whatever discernment you have. And you find that you learn about them, and as you learn about them, you can see more clearly exactly how they can be undercut. Where does this happen? All happens right here. So focus your attention right here. Make it clear right here. Stable, steady right here, with a sense of well-being. When you're coming from a sense of well-being, it's a lot easier to train the mind have the right attitude toward its unskillful qualities, and the right attitude toward its skillful qualities, too. It's 
because you're coming from a sense of well-being, that the mind is willing to open up and admit things for what they are, and to admit that it actually can change. So we use the breath to develop that sense of well-being. And then we realize that it's not only while we're sitting here with our eyes closed, we can take that with us wherever we go.